All right, so I'd like to do something with a center of mass, centers of mass, or something that you're used to. It's not really, you know, the world's most complicated thing. Finding the center of mass, which is going to be two components in this case, because this is going to be for a rectangular region, right? It's going to be for some rectangle like that. Um, that'll have, you know, a width w. Let's go from the edge here, w minus w over 2 to w over 2, um, with a height up here of h. So it's got some rectangular region there, and it's got some variable density, right? And the variable density will be maximum right here. We'll use sigma not, and um, I'm going to just let this go to zero here. Uh, I meant to write zero. So it's going to linear, de linear nearly <laughs> as a function of y, sigma will linearly decrease from sigma naught uh, to zero at h. So it'll go like that, all right? Um, and, you know, this could model, for example, a uh, a thin wedge or something like that where you don't have to worry about the um, directions coming into and out of this camera here, uh, into or out of the screen. So that's a reasonably simple thing to do. So I just want to go through the steps, right? I don't really want to clog your brain too much as far as the um, difficulty is concerned, but I also don't want to do anything that's so easy that it's uh, that you don't learn anything from it. So I think that's, this is about the um, best trade-off that I can think of for now. May not be a good trade-off. We'll find out when we give you tests. Tests tell me how well my examples work for you. All right, so given. All right, what have we got? We've got a um, rectangle with a um, width and a height, a width W and a height H. with a variable density. So always best to gather your gather your facts before you decide to try to make conclusions from them. So gather the facts first, and that's what we're doing here. All right. So if I use this thing here, that means at height h, this goes to 0, and we just have a line. Uh, the reason why I want it to go to 0 is not because it's uh, realistic, but because it makes things drop out and life is a lot nicer, right? We don't have a lot of extra numbers or letters or whatever running around. I've tried, I tried a couple of more realistic things to go with and that was not pretty. Uh, so, I mean, it wasn't difficult. There, wasn't, there weren't any things in there that, um, that anybody would think were complicated it's just that it what anything there wasn't any step that was complicated it was just that when you got to the end you had a mess of letters and numbers and it didn't really make any sense to just look at those numbers you'd have to think about those numbers almost as hard as you did bring them together to decide if you're right or not all right so if we're finding the center of mass um, that means what we want to look at are the moments the x moment and the y moment divided by the mass, all right? Um, okay, I should do this differently. Your book, for, for some reason, has decided that the moment should be labeled uh, y for the x moment and x for the y moment. And why? I don't know. I, uh, you know, he's on third, and I don't give a darn. All right, so find mass. So finding the mass, mass is simple, right? We're all cool with the mass, right? We just do a double integral over my entire thing of my density. Re my entire thing is R, density, little dA, dA is a little bit here, right? Then we've got another little bit here, and we can just eat, add up all of these little bits, and we're done. Simple enough. So we go minus W over 2 to W over 2, that's for X, for Y we have 0 to H, right? Um, then we have sigma naught 1 minus y over h, right? d um, y dx. Uh, x bit is w, and sigma naught comes out. We have integral 0 to h 1 minus y over h dx or dy. Uh huh. Okay, so this is just h minus 1 half h. So we have um, 1 half sigma naught 
width times the height. Okay. Um, that makes sense. This is linearly decreasing, right? So in a way, it's sort of the average of what the um, what the mass would be if it was uniform density either with sigma naught or zero, which is one half. Awesome. So that was simple enough. Uh, then we need to find our moments, right? And like I said, for some reason, your book uh, says that your moment for the x is equal to the double integral of y sigma naught or sigma um, dA. The reason for that, I do not know. I can make some conjectures. But then when they go to um, the moment of inertia, they don't use what I would consider the um, logical conclusion. So if you, so if, yeah, anyways. So if I'm doing x and then integrating over the y, I think that if you were going to do y squared, you do xz, right? But that's not what they do. <laughs> so um, I, yeah, I don't know their rationale. They didn't explain it to me. Um, but this is the notation they use. Still no interesting things with um, x, and we can um, pull out the sigma naught still. That's no issue. Um, and then we have uh, 0 to h, y minus y squared over h uh, dy. And, you know, I could do the same thing here that I did up there, um, which is do it all in my head, um, but I won't. So you're going to have to listen to me just a little bit longer. I apologize. And let's see, what am I going to do? Um, y is 1 half h minus 0, but we don't care about minus zeros, and minus 1 third h squared over h which is just h, right? And then we have 1 half minus 1 third, which is 1 sixth. So we have w sigma naught w I should have an h squared here and h cubed there. Um, don't know why. Sigma naught w h squared one sixth, or it's divided by six. I can just do divide by six. Ah, do too many of these at once, and your brain is fried. Um, all right, then we do a double integral with the other direction, with an x there. What we have here is something really nice, which is minus w over two to w over two dx uh, of x dx. Well, what is that? That guy's zero, right? So we also have whatever we were going to do over here, which was a sigma naught one minus y over h. So even though we already did this bit here, we don't know that's going to zero, so that's zero. So we're okay with that. Um, push it up just a little bit, and then we combine all this stuff with this equation up here. So we say, all right, the um, center of mass for an x thing in the x direction, it's my over m, which is zero, right? Uh, plus in the y direction, it's uh, mx over m, um, which is equal to y hat, uh, let's see, sigma naught wh squared over six, sigma naught wh over two, Okay, well, what am I going to do here? Well, I think I'm going to keep myself a um, one-third, right? So I have y hat h over 3, all right? And that's a pretty reasonable thing. That says that rather than being in this... So saying that, as far as x is concerned, it's along the center axis here. And rather than being at the centroid, it's going to be at about one-third down here. That makes plenty of sense to me, and it hopefully makes plenty of sense to you. So, um, you know, we've got a reasonable answer, and that's how you're going to do those center of mass problems. You only have about seven of them 
in the homework. Uh, I don't remember how many you have on WebAssign, but hey, you, you know, there's plenty to go around, right? Talk to you later. Bye.